I want to share with you all a recent excursion of mine exploring pop music. Now, during the last five or six years or so, I've been exploring different genres and I've been compiling this list of different genres that I've been meaning to cover. And honestly, pop was not on this list. But what happened was I took on this gig where I was pretty much forced to do a mini pop study. So basically the job was to record 10 made up piano intros that were inspired by a list of popular songs from different generations. And at first I didn't think much about it, but the project turned into a very interesting subject for me. <laughs> This was one of the first songs that I listened to and the things that stood out to me first was the register. Pretty close together, very efficiently voiced as opposed to something wider. Also the way it's played, it has this sort of straightforward quality. Uh, not just the tempo but pianistically, I, I feel almost feel like there are these micro slaps happening because you really can't play it too loose or loosely. It doesn't sound as right, I think. Also, of course, the syncopation. If I were to change a few things here or maybe just take the first few notes, maybe the first four, I could probably turn it into something like this, which is classical and not pop sounding at all. Um, or if I were to... Let me, okay. Something like that, maybe. Also, I'm using those first four notes. But as soon as you go back down, this progression is not commonly found in classical music. So. Anyway, that is one, for example, I took all of those things and tried to intuitively come up with a distant cousin version of it, which ended up sounding like this. If I were to spread the hands apart, it doesn't sound as poppy or have everything down here, maybe get rid of the syncopations. Also less poppy. This is another one that I listened to. I said what I did about the lower register but here of course it sits perfectly fine in this lower register I think it's because of the increased simplicity of of the pattern if I were to just keep one direction it almost sounds like moonlight it's also very consistent. It's just going up and down the chord. And I was going for that, loosely speaking, in my version, which was maybe less of uh, a farther cousin from this than the other one was to A Thousand Miles. Alright, so you get the point. Afterwards, I continued to just ponder about this. It became interesting to me and it just sparked something in me to continue to ask the question, what 
exactly is pop music, what makes pop music pop music. The first thing that I did was actually call my good friend Andrew Huang, who's helped me with so many different things because he is a master at so many different genres and so many different skill sets. So I called him up and I asked him this very question. You're in a unique position where you do so many genres. Sometimes when I see your uh, Instagram posts or your YouTube videos, you would specifically identify this is more of my pop side or this is more of my experimental side. So what are you tapping into when you say that this is more of a pop side of me? Well, for me, I specify things because I've just found over time it helps to contextualize things for the listener. It helps to set expectations. And when you're outputting a lot of different kinds of things, I, I just feel like that is a helpful thing to do rather than people being completely shocked or something. And when I say pop, I think that, um, I mean, it's a term that means, that has meant a lot of different things over the decades, but I think essentially it's like this idea of creating a song in such a way that it's meant to be fun, catchy, singable, have a bit more um, immediate appeal. Immediate appeal. Wow, I, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it, yeah, it's about being accessible, I guess. Okay. But that changes, of course, over every several years, we have a completely new sound of pop. Is there a way to define it as a genre musically? I think that um, it tends to have a very similar structure, uh, very kind of like predictable three choruses, Almost everything is based around the basic kind of verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus form, even though there may be variations within that. I think basically from the point where we were recording singers, probably vocals have been a prominent feature of like there's very little instrumental pop music. But there's periods of time where I feel like some sounds of pop you couldn't really define as other things. I don't, maybe, maybe that's not, but, so I'm thinking about like the 90s. A boy band, you know, Backstreet Boys. Right. I, that, that just feels like pure pop to me, even though I guess, you know, there's maybe, they're, they're probably borrowing from like underground dance music of the time. And certainly the songwriting might have had a history throughout like, you know, somewhat older styles, but um, yeah, there's certain sounds that feel like they are just pop in a way. I think, well, I guess this is true for many genres. You don't necessarily have to have the whole checklist of elements to be able to make it, you know, to be able to apply the label. So I think plenty, uh, like actually any pop song, if you performed it just on the piano, I feel like still retains just enough of the poppiness to it. Kind of, I think exploring that line of like, where does it become pop? That is uh, interesting. Usually when I do a genre study like this, I go to my Instagram and I ask the many wonderful individuals that follow me over there what their favorite song in a particular genre was. And just cycling through all of the answers, I found one that was very piano centric that I thought was perfect for doing some further experimentation with. It's Somebody You Loved by Luis Capaldi. When I was at the piano, I decided that I would take the beginning portion of the song at least and cycle it through different genres and different styles. To the best of my ability, of course, I'm more familiar with some than I am with others. I just had some fun trying to find that point where it becomes more or less pop. And to my surprise, this was a lot harder than I thought it would be because it was not a matter of just shifting a few things. First, in terms of harmony, there are four chords that are repeated throughout the song. If this sounds a little familiar, I think it's because it's only one chord away from being Pachelbel's canon. Here I just changed the rhythm slightly while keeping the melody the same. And when I changed the chords a bit and still kept the melody, it sounded like it could have still been a part of the original.
Then I changed the chords further and added this sort of bossa nova feel. Once I changed certain things about the melody, it was no longer the song, and for certain genres I needed to change so much more than just a few tweaks here and there. For example, here where I was trying to imitate the style of Chopin, I really had to change the chord progression quite a bit and was only able to retain a small portion of the melody. When I'm doing these genre studies, I'm really driven simply by curiosity as a listener, a player, a music appreciator in general, but also there's a part of me as a composer that is very interested in trying out different things. Yeah, even if it doesn't stick to what I normally do, just in practice, try something out, experiment with it. And in this case, I set out to write a popish piece, not necessarily a pop song or a fully pop piece, I guess you all will let me know how pop I got, but I was paying attention to a few things. First, the bridge chorus, bridge chorus. <laughs> oh no, the verse chorus, verse chorus, bridge chorus form. Um, yes. Anyway, to me, that form is sort of like going between two areas, like a teeter totter, and then going to a different space, and then coming back to this teeter-totter. <laughs> I don't know if that made any sense, but to me, that's how I thought of it. Uh, also, I really tried to come up with a catchy or memorable melody. That's part one. Part two. And I was thinking of the chords that go underneath it, and when I usually do that, I tend to come up with these patterns that I favor a lot of times when I'm improvising or writing music. Here are the three chords for my piece. That's really detached and chaotic. I don't know, I, I just like that kind of sound. So this was prior to recording the actual arrangement. I was just playing around with the chords and this might have been the default direction that I would have taken. As soon as I started doing that, it lost all of its catchiness or memorable qualities. So I, I really changed directions and decided that I was going to keep it simple. And basically I just kept looping that chord progression. After the bridge and then coming back to the original with again a few tweaks, I ended the piece with a, a sort of fade out. I thought that was appropriate. And what else? Yeah, I think that's it. Um, here's the piece.
this is so familiar and so obvious to me that I almost feel like this melody has already been written. And if it, <laughs> if it has been, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to plagiarize or copy at all. I just, this was my best attempt at looking for something catchy. So if it already exists, it's probably just subconscious regurgitation. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you found this interesting. For me, it was especially intriguing as a composer because just the, the practice of coming up with a melody that is very distinct like this, uh, I thought was great, a great exercise. And yeah, having a melody is quite cool. <laughs> it's something to think about, something to chew on. And other than that, let me know your thoughts in the comments and I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye.